kaninyang tanan? How is everything going with you? Kumusta na po ang homeschooling? Naka-adjust na po ba? Are you excited as you teach your children every day? Are you getting more ideas as you go along? Today, I am so excited because we are going to talk about creating an integrated curriculum that leads to a unit study. Isa po ito sa mga paborito naming mga homeschoolers and we want to share this with you. And I asked three families to share with us their COVID-19 inspired unit study lessons. Pero teka, ano ba yung integrated curriculum? Tsaka, paano ba ginagawa yung unit study? Okay, before I go into that, let me first of all share with you what a curriculum is. This is something I learned from Professor Claribel Amihan when I attended one of her seminars for educators. Sabi niya, a curriculum is the sum of all learning content, experiences, and resources that are carefully selected, organized, and implemented by the school in pursuit of its specific mandate as a distinct institution of learning and human development. So basically, yung curriculum, yun yung overall na uh, environment kung saan natututo ang isang bata. So para sa ating mga homeschoolers, our curriculum is the overall learning environment. So yung buong bahay natin is part of the curriculum. Lahat ng ginagawa natin is part of the curriculum. Sa homeschool, napaka-natural na gawing integrated ang curriculum. So, for us homeschoolers, um, it comes like second nature to us that everything is integrated and our learning experience is always integrated because we realize that it's so much easier for children to learn when everything is integrated at hindi ginawang segments. No? So, what this means is that we design the learning experience to be all connected and anchored to a single theme. Kaya napakadaling gumawa ng unit study sa homeschooling. So if you're a homeschooler, this is like something that normally happens at home, no? You 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 identify a topic and then before you know it, you've already branched out to all the other subjects within a given time frame because everything is integrated for you. So para sa inyo mga mommies who are doing this for the first time, we will show you today how other families are doing it so that you get an idea. Ano naman yung unit study? A unit study takes a theme or topic and delves deeply into it over a period of time. So, kaya siya unit study because you're integrating other subjects into it using a particular theme as a core. So, you integrate language arts, you integrate science, you integrate math, you integrate um, arts, you integrate music, you even integrate PE. Yes, you can do that. That's what makes it a unit study. So instead of studying 8 or 10 separate unrelated subjects, all the subjects are blended together and studied around a common theme and you create a singular project that becomes, uh, or several projects, as a learning output for your integrated curriculum. At sa panahon ngayon, when the whole world is talking about COVID-19, what else can be a good core theme for your unit study? Of course, it's COVID-19. At napakadami ngayon na mga uh, resources and there's a lot of ideas that we are seeing online that could help inspire your COVID-19 unit study lessons. Here are some sample homeschool lessons that were actually done by homeschooling families that I personally know. And I'm so glad that these families are so generous at, they, at pumayag sila na i-share sa atin ang kanilang lesson plans. In fact, I'm so um, blessed because they allowed us into their homeschool routine. They allowed us to take a peek into their homeschooling. The first homeschool that we will visit is that of the Dalisay family homeschool. The daughters of Mami Saiza are Snow and Hale. Ganda ng names nila, no? 
So the girls became curious about the coronavirus. They actually asked, Mama, what's the coronavirus? And Mama Saiza capitalized um, on this curiosity and decided to create an integrated curriculum around it. So this is a very good example of a unit study for pre-K to K or to kinder level. bisitahin ay ang homeschool ng Liwanag family. Tatay Carlos shared with me how amazed he was that Nanay Wawi was able to create such a wonderful lesson for their 8-year-old daughter Lexi. Ang dami daw nilang napag-usapan, ang dami daw nilang natutunan in just a short period of time. So, here is the homeschool that um, the homeschool of the Liwanag family and um, Nanay Wawi was generous enough to show us their integrated curriculum that led them to this unit study on COVID-19. Lexi made a zine for her comic infographics of COVID-19. She did arts by folding, cutting, pasting, and coloring the images. After that, she read the information and she learned about the acronym its signs and symptoms, the people who are prone to getting the virus, and what our social responsibilities are. For geography, she looked up for countries in the map that were affected by the virus and we named the top five countries with the highest number of cases and deaths. We also differentiated bacteria from virus and how they are affecting our bodies. I gave a brief lesson on respiratory system too, its parts and its major function. I also taught Lexi about our immune system and how it works in preventing us from being sick. For our values education, I made her read Psalm 91 and memorize its verse 1 to 2. Psalm 91 verses 1 to 2 And I will be forever in His protection, for I trust the Lord. We read and watched Bible stories where Jesus healed His people. Then she wrote a beautiful prayer to God after. To keep everyone healthy in the family, we stored vitamin C rich fruits like oranges and apples. I also taught Lexi how to cook garlic soup because it was said to have antiviral and antibacterial property. Last but not the least, we made a simple science experiment using black pepper, water, and hand soap to emphasize the importance of hand washing. Then, we ended our homeschooling day with a demonstration of a 20-second proper hand washing. So after seeing the homeschool of preschoolers and of early graders, no? so preschoolers is Snow and Hill, age um, 4 and 5. Lexi is an early grader, age 8. Now we go to the older kids. So this time, uh, we are blessed because we have... Uh, the Miraflores family, um, whose kids are a bit older. So they will show us what they did uh, in their COVID-19 inspired homeschool. An additional bonus here is that their dad is a doctor. See, si Doc Dudoy is uh, one of our doctors here in Davao City and we're praying for him and his team, no? yung protection nila. But they, sh they are showing us how they were able to learn about COVID-19 and um, create an integrated um, curriculum for their unit study. 
Here's the Miraflores homeschool family. Para lang ba, ang, ang unit study ay para lang ba sa mga maliliit na bata? Actually, no. Teens and high schoolers can also have a unit study. Kasi mas maganda nga siyang i-discuss over a long period of time. Um, our teens can do a lot with a unit study on COVID-19. Um, anchored on this core theme, your homeschoolers, your high schoolers can do these things. Idea number one, for example, so science, you can do also, um, you can treat your science lessons as a research. So this is a good opportunity to teach your teens how to do research. Uh, you can do an in-depth study about viruses, and then you can focus on COVID-19, and you can also do an in-depth study about infectious diseases, again, leading towards a focus on uh, COVID-19. For world history and geography, you can trace the pandemics in history uh, from ancient time to the present and where they are located in the world. So you can actually read um, how the disease traveled no, from different places and what was the mode of transmission at up to what extent ang inabot ng pandemic na to. Um, when my daughter Himi worked on this, she was able to trace back uh, the earliest pandemic recorded to about four, some, somewhere around 400 BC in Athens. So she was able to do um, an actual tracing from that period until the present day, which is the coronavirus pandemic. Another, um, another thing that your, your teens can do, some math then, so pwede niyo i-connect yung math and then yung science and then do research, is that you could gather data from the WHO and create a graph that shows the trend about the spread of COVID-19, number of confirmed cases, recoveries, deaths, um, and then you can lead your, your teenager to analyze the data and compare it with published reports for validation. So, siya yung mismo, based dun sa mga nababasa niya, siya yung gagawa ng kanyang graph uh, siya yung mag-line mag up ng data and then siya yung mag analyze Tapos, titignan nyo yung existing na mga reports and see kung yung analysis niya um, is valid, no? If, it's, if it actually matches um, other existing reports that were done by uh, medical practitioners and scientists. For social studies, um, you can have your teenager read on the government's response to the COVID-19 crisis. Spreading locally, okay, within the city, for instance, you, um, you can lead your um, child, your teenager, to trace back from the beginning. Dito sa, dito sa atin sa Davao, direct, sa ato sa Davao City, um, you can sa first time na nag-release ang ato ang government, city government, uh, ng mga um, directives about uh, how to deal with coronavirus up to this day, pwedeng yun yung kanyang i-focus. Or you could look at a national level 
uh, na pag-deal sa, sa crisis, no? how the, our national government um, dealt with the crisis, or your child could also do a comparative analysis of the different governments and how they were able to um, address the issue. So, he could your your child would actually do a contrast and comparison and analy um, analyzing government um, response to the crisis. Then, as a result, you can either do a discussion. You can have a discussion time with your with your teenager, or uh, you could have your kid do uh, or write an essay on whether he or she disagrees, agrees or disagrees with the steps that the government is taking. Um, and what would be his or her contribution? For example, kung siya yung nasa posisyon ng Pangulo, ano ang kanyang gagawin? If he were in the position of the President or the Mayor, what would he or she do in times like this? So she could write a paper, a, an essay about this. Another way of um, approaching this is write, um, write a personal essay talking about what he or she could do um, as a teenager uh, at a time like this. What could he or she contribute um, to the society to help alleviate um, the situation. For economics and TLE, one idea could be read about um, what's going on, watch the news, and then after that, analyze the current situation and discuss um, with each other, no, the uh, let your teen discuss with you, the parent teacher, which businesses does he think will thrive at this time of crisis? Which businesses will go under? Which businesses will uh, suffer the most? Which sector will be greatly affected by uh, the crisis? Um, you can ask your teen, what do you think will be the effect of COVID nineteen? Uh, to our economy after one month of being in quarantine? Uh, what do you think um, can we do to revive our economy um, should it suffer great losses as a result of COVID-19? So if you are a family with a business, this is uh, something that I think would be very helpful for you at mas magiging relevant. It will make this times um, relevant for your teen because you can actually involve them in discussing the situation um, so like many of you um, i also our family also has a business and we're greatly affected by what has happened no um, we are in a travel we are also in the travel industry and we are one of the first who really felt the effect of um, the COVID-19 crisis. So what you could do is you could actually ask your teens to discuss with you um, about the situation of your business. Uh, I think we can all do this together and be a family at this time. Um, ask them how your business can stay afloat at this time. You can tell them the difficulties. You can tell them the situation that we are, that you are going through. Ano ang status? Um, and maybe they have ideas. You can ask them for their ideas, how the business can stay afloat during this time of quarantine, how you can recover after the quarantine. Uh, if you have employees, uh, discuss how can we be of help? How can we help our employees at this time um, when many things are being stalled, maraming mga shops na pinapasara, um, how can we help our employees? Um, you might be surprised at the creative ideas of your kids, no? Actually, yung mga kabataan, marami yan silang mga uh, ideas and mga insights that sometimes we adults miss kasi akala natin, um, hindi, hindi, it, it's not that valuable. But this is an, a very great opportunity for our kids to take part in brainstorming for um, ideas and solutions uh, to keep our businesses afloat. Uh, make sure you keep a notebook kasi baka yung mga ideas nila are so great that you have to take note of what they are saying. Jot them down, jot their suggestions down. And if their suggestions work, I suggest you incentivize your kids. 
uh, pay them for their ideas. Nagbabayad nga tayo sa consultants, di ba? We even pay people to help us think about um, how to make our business um, uh, better. Then, so if our kids have great ideas, then might as well incentivize them by compensating them. Okay, idea for language arts. Uh, one of my favorite sonnets was, uh, one of my favorite sonnets is by John Donne. It's called Death Be Not Proud. So automatically that was what I thought uh, might be a good um, topic for language arts. Learn about the sonnet, recite it. Uh, I remember memorizing this as a student before. Um, pag nyo what kind of a sonnet is this, what is its central theme, what is the message of, of the poem, what figure of speech did um, John Donne use, um, what is the story behind the sonnet. Uh, you can also look into the biography of John Donne. He has a very interesting life. So this could be for your language arts. Um, instead of um, fearing death, instead of fearing... Um, COVID-19, we can actually talk about it and see how do we view life, how do we view death. Uh, and this could actually lead to some very meaningful discussions. Uh, your children, especially the teenagers, would probably be asking you some existential questions at this time. Uh, they might start thinking about their purpose in life. Who knows, this quarantine period would lead your children to actually discover um, what are they designed for? How What their creator has purposed for their lives. So take this opportunity to do that and to help your kids discover uh, what is what truly matters no, in life, in purpose in life. And then uh, how to perceive death and what should be our attitudes, attitude towards um, the fragility of life, the the brevity of life. Ano ba yung dapat na maging pananaw natin about life and its brevity? And um, hindi natin alam kailan. Uh, death is sure, but we just don't know when it's gonna knock at our doorstep. So, um, what do we do before that happens? How do we make the most out of our lives? So, this is a very rich uh, language arts lesson. So, I hope uh, that would be a good um, alternative for you to use. Paano naman ang Filipino at araling panlipunan? Kailangan pa ba nating mag-Filipino? Um, alam ko maraming mga magulang na hihirapang ituro ito. Actually, um, pwede nating gamitin ang COVID-19 bilang uh, uh, paksa sa pag-aaral ng Filipino at araling panlipunan. Pwede yung gamitin yung mga uh, materiales na nandiyan sa internet. Isa na dito yung uh, nagandahan ako na yung infographic ng ginawa ng UP Diliman. So, nandyan pa yan. Uh, nakikita ko pa siyang uh, nare-repost sa mga walls. Um, at uh, gamitin nyo yun. Pag-usapan nyo. Uh, hayaan ninyo yung anak ninyo ang magbasa. Uh, bas pabasa nyo sa Filipino. Ito yung magandang pagkakataon na pag nagbasa sila ng, ng malakas, pwede yung um, itama ang kanilang pagbigkas. Pwede ninyong uh, itama ang kanilang uh, pananaw sa wikang Filipino na pwede naman pala nating aralin. Meron naman pala siyang gamit. No? At maaari nating mahalin ang sarili nating wika. Kung kayo ay galing sa ibang mga lalawigan ng Pilipinas, pwede nyo ding tignan at pag-aralan yung inyong mga uh, uh, aralin sa inyong wika. Uh, hanapin niyo yung mga uh, mga posts na nandun sa inyong wika. Nakakita na po ako ng mga posts na uh, translate no? Naan na yung mga posts translate sa Bisaya, naan na po sa, murag naan na po sa Hiligay noon. So, kung wala pa, wala pa mong mga material sa inyong mga languages, kung wala ka sa inyong wika, o di ito ang magandang paraan, ito ang magandang pagkakataon para gumawa kayo ng sarili ninyong mga infographics uh, sa inyo inyong mga wika. So, hindi lang puro English dapat yung umiikot ng mga infographics. Gawa din tayo sa wikang Pilipino, gawa tayo sa wikang Cebuano, gawa tayo sa wikang Hiligay non, Bicol, at iba pa. Key, handicraft and social action 
can be to make face masks. We've heard that there's already a um, shortage of face masks, especially those that are needed by those in the front lines. Ang ating mga doctors and nurses have been asking for um, water bottles so that they could turn into face masks. They were. I, I have friends who are also making face masks out of acetates. Uh, meron din yung mga nagtatahi, yung mga those who are good at sewing, they are now beginning to sew face masks. Uh, why don't we learn that at home and we could use that as our social action and handicrafts class. And then at, when you finish your face masks, you can actually give it, uh, give it away to uh, those who are in the front lines. By the way, those who are in the front lines are not just wearing white, sabi nga nila, hindi lang yung mga doktor at yung mga nurses. We have bankers, um, we have the police, we have um, the military also in the checkpoint, our government um, workers who are being asked to report um, for work, yung mga mayors natin, yung mga NASA, um, mga service providers in the government sector, they are also frontliners. Um, nakita ko din yung mga I realized even yung mga security guards no uh, sa mga establishments they are frontliners so we could actually also include them in our prayers and include them in your thoughts as you make your handicrafts of um, upcycled face masks so pwede natin ibigay yun sa kanila by the way yung minet, well, the, the thing that I mentioned earlier about the infographics in the in the Filipino or in other Philippine languages, if you could create those infographics, that will be great because then you can um, uh, disseminate them in your own barangays, uh, and then you can share with your kasambahay, uh, your drivers or your employees also, so that they could also disseminate that to others. Okay, music and art, you can actually. Make use of this time to be creative, no? Teens, how about creating a song or a poem that speaks of hope and that could lift up the spirits of people, no? Create something as a result of this quarantine period, as a result of, uh, that's COVID-inspired, no? Alam ko marami na tayong nababasa na mga posts na medyo uh, heartbreaking or discouraging. Let's, let's intentionally create something that's uh, good, that is full of hope, that will inspire faith, uh, and let's share it, no? Um, might as well perform. Why don't you perform uh, online? Alam ko marami sa inyo mahilig mag-FB live. Why don't you do a performance and, and share it with others and inspire hope among other teens? Idea for Bible and characters for teens, no? Um, as a family, how about designating a time of day to meditate and to pray? Uh, this will be a good opportunity to uh, look into the scriptures. Um, in our family, we have been reading aloud Psalm 91. Some families I know are also meditating on Psalm 23. These, uh, these are very good psalms. They are ancient songs that talk about hope, that talk about God being our refuge and our strength, that um, talk about God um, protecting His people. So this is a very good time to designate uh, a time of day um, to, as a family to meditate and pray. Um, Pray for the Philippines. Pray for other countries. Pray for other people. Ang kagandahan ng quarantine period, it gives us a lot of time to reflect. So maybe you could also inspire your teens to um, have a journal. Uh, parang COVID-19 diaries. No, uh, Instead of getting bored lang, uh, write about that boredom. In fact, one of the homeschool moms, veteran homeschool moms and friends, one of my friends, si Lakshmi Maluya, was saying, it's okay, let the kids get bored. Every now and then, kailangan nila yan. Because out of boredom, uh, creativity comes. No, Out of boredom, baka an invention might, might come out. So, kids, if you're getting bored, how about do some journaling? 
or painting along the way. As you journal, you do your bullet journal and you write about each of your day um, while in quarantine. And then as a family, of course, even during mealtimes, discuss what you are learning about this period. Discuss about um, what do you feel God is telling you uh, as a result of this quarantine period. Um, how have you seen God work around you or in your family or in your own self, in your own life during this time? So did you get some fresh ideas? I hope you did. Uh, Nag-enjoy ako habang nanonood ng homeschool ng ibang families. I hope you also um, learned a lot from these families. I am sure kayang kaya yung gawin yan. You, can, you probably have more ideas um, and you're probably coming up with bright um, insights into how you can make your homeschooling um, even more dynamic. Alam ko kaya yung gumawa ng integrated lesson plan for your unit study. Uh, when you do unit study, you give your child an opportunity to really exhaust his curiosity. You're giving your child um, an opportunity to learn a topic so well kasi hindi kayo nagmamadali. That's the beauty of a unit study. You don't rush. You can actually dig deeper. You can take your time. In fact, for many of us homeschoolers, um, sometimes our unit study on one topic can last us a week, sometimes even a month because there's just so much wealth uh, into a single topic that we could actually go deeper and deeper. Uh, you can stretch your lesson and you could actually write it down Now, what will you do per day so that your lessons are um, well laid out and you can really exhaust um, a material or the materials that you have on a certain topic. Napakaraming pwedeng gawin, napakaraming pwedeng matutunan. And the best part about this is, and I'm sure many of you um, would agree with me, is that as you are preparing for your integrated curriculum, before you taught your child, or before you teach your children, sorry, before you teach your children, you yourself have learned so much. Tama ba? No? Uh, kayo mismo natututo habang inaaral nyo kung ano yung gusto nyong ituro sa anak ninyo. And that makes it so enriching because you experience growth. You yourself are growing while you are homeschooling your child. I hope you enjoyed today's video and I hope you enjoyed um, learning from the other families who generously shared their homeschool ideas. Daghang salamat sa Liwanag family, the Lisay family, and Mira Flores family for letting us into your homeschool. Uh, if you like this video, if you learned from it, please don't forget to like and to subscribe. And of course, to share this video to others. Remember, sharing is caring. So share this, pass this on to other moms and, and homeschooling dads and moms out there who might be in need of ideas on how to integrate their lessons and create their unit studies. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Uh, if you have questions or any, any thoughts about homeschooling, please feel free to comment below or to send us a message using uh, the contact information that's on your screen. So we would love to hear from you, especially those of you who live in Mindanao. Na alang mi diri sa Davao, so uh, pagkahuman sa quarantine, we hope we could see you one day and we could get in touch and you could be uh, in touch with our community here at Ars and Rivers. We would um, also like for you to let us know how else we could be of service to you um, through the videos that we are coming up uh, with. So, we would love to be of assistance to you during this time of quarantine. So, I hope to see you again uh, someday. Uh, don't forget also that we have um, a regular FB live uh, chats. No? Uh, so, if you, if you happen to pass by, no, might as well go to our FB page, Iris and Quivers FB page, and we will be announcing there the schedule uh, of when we go for FB Live. So why not join us? Kung hindi na kayo for the next video, join us in the next FB Live. 
So, see you again next time. Thank you for joining me. Daghang salamat. Ayo-ayo! Oh, 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 oh